Dumb Husky and his white cat she's un. Extra Chapters Shwemeng's Blind Date Tea Selling Little Sister, Part 5 Shwemeng and Mei Han Shui hadn't seen each other for a while. Mei Han Shui was the kind of person who wouldn't visit a temple without reason. Moreover, during the world calamity, the fact that him and his younger brother used the same identity has been exposed to everyone. Now, the entire cultivation world knew that the Taxia Palace actually have two Dashik Siam. Those female cultivators who had their hearts broken by the younger Mei before and felt that they couldn't be saved anymore have now set their designs onto the elder Mei. They felt that the elder Mei Han Shui was handsome and steady. Moreover, he is not promiscuous with no romantic history. A perfect substitute for his brother. They all expressed that they wouldn't ask for another man in this life if they could only sleep with the elder Mei Dashik Siam. However, this declaration only served to make Mei Han Shui incessantly annoyed. For the past two years, he had rarely appeared in the mundane world. The last time he met with Shui Meng was when he was ordered by the sect leader of Taxiu Palace to bring sect leader Shui a box of top grade Tianchan Snow Lotus. When he arrived at that time, he coincidentally came across the new sect leader of Zhang Dong Hall who had arrived before him to pay Shui Meng a visit. The new Zhang Dong Hall sect leader was called Huaro Wei. Although she was a sect leader, she was nothing compared to the heroic Ye Wangzi nor to the loving and virtuous Madame Wang nor to the awe-inspiring Madame Rong. She was a curiosity with how she had managed to sleep her way through all the sect elders and thus was selected to her current position after the death of the old sect elder Huang Ziyu. The only renown this person have any claim to was the fact that she slept her way through all of Zhang Dong Hall's twelve elders, a feat known throughout the streets and every book stalls. Moreover, each of these ancient turtles had their heads firmly inside their shells that not a single one of them knew the full truth of the situation. Even if rumors were to float past their ears, as soon as Huaro Wei started wailing about it, those twelve elders would rise with indignant fury and declare with outrage that Wei Wei is pure. She's nothing like those flirty sluts out there. You should not spread rumors about her. Mei Han Shui thought that this woman was truly strange. She could compete with his brother in terms of promiscuity. He has a clear idea of what sort of person this Huaro Wei was but unfortunately, Shui Meng didn't. Shui Meng was someone who didn't like to listen to rumors. There had been a time that he was willing to humor them but after hearing different accounts of Chu Wanning and Mo Weiyu's exploits during their supposed seclusion in Nanping Mountains, Shui Meng couldn't handle it and declare an edict that all sorts of gossip are forbidden in Shi Sheng Peak. Due to this, he hadn't heard a word of Huaro Wei's degenerate ways and how she used men for her own means. Thus, when he came over to bring the gift of Tian Shan Snow Lotus, he coldly stared at Huaro Wei who were doing her utmost to flirt with sect leader Shui. Zimingaji, this one just adores you. Zimingaji, can I touch your armor? It's so shiny. Zimingaji, Wei Wei thinks you're super incredible. You're so young and yet you're already in charge of the entire lower cultivation world, you must work super hard. Although Shui Meng thought this was all incredibly cliched, Flattery could get through the toughest armor, not to mention that Shui Meng is someone who loved to hear people singing his praises. Having been praised by Huaro Wei to the high heavens in such a sickly sweet manner, he still felt a bit floaty despite himself and started to giggle like a fool. Mei Han Shui couldn't stand to look at the scene anymore. He even wondered if Shui Meng had a hole in his head. So, he slammed the wooden box containing the Tian Shan Snow Lotus onto the table, making Huaro Wei jump with surprise at the noise. The first thing that the little pretty thing did after regaining her senses was to pat her plump bosom and throw a flirty look at Mei Han Shui with her limpid, glittering eyes and said, Han Shui Gaji's hand strength is truly great, just how strong you are. Mei Han Shui simply looked at her with cold indifference and replied, You're not my sister. Huaro Wei was not expecting that anyone would react so indifferently to her overtures. She stuttered with embarrassment, I... I was just joking around. Yes, I can see that you're a joke. Huaro Wei. Shui Meng couldn't stand that and said, Alright, enough already. 
SEC leader Hua is still a guest. She told me that after the great world calamity, she had a revelation and realized that what Zhang Dong Hall did before wasn't right. So this time, she came here especially to mend relations with Shi Shangpik. Isn't that right sect leader Hua? Hua Rowei had been handling Shui Meng with ease but under Mei Han Shui's scrutiny, she hesitated. She felt that Mei Han Shui could see straight to her calculating little heart. Shrinking her neck into her shoulders, she smiled stiffly and said vaguely, Yes, that's right. Sect leader Shui is one I admire the most. I really adore him, ha ha ha. Mei Han Shui simply sneered and said, but the last time you visited Gai Yuye, you said the exact same words toward Jiangxi. Hua Rowei's face suddenly changed and replied, That's, that's not true. Mei Han Shui cut in, after you said it, you even rubbed yourself against Zhang Yuchen's leg. Shui Men was startled, What? Hua Rowei. Mei Han Shui explained to Shui Men expressionlessly, Last month, this sect leader Hua went to Gai Yuya and tried to use the exact same words to seduce sect leader Zhang and incidentally saw death by rubbing herself against his thighs. Zhang Yuchen got enraged and dragged her by the arm and threw her bodily out of Gai Yuya's sect. Afterwards, he sent someone to gift her prescriptions worth thousands of golds for venereal diseases to express his feelings. Shui Men. This incident has already spread throughout Yangzhou City. I had business that way these past two days and happened to stay in Yangzhou where this news found its way to me. Hua Rowei never expected that of these two people both called Mei Hangsu, the elder brother would be so much harsher that than the younger and that he wouldn't leave a woman any face at all. She blushed but held on to a desperate hope that she could still turn the tides. Pitifully she said, Han Shui Ji, those are all rumors. Look at my eyes. See if I look like I'm lying to you. Mei Han Shui really did turn to look. Hua Rowei felt a spark of happiness and cast her flirty, teary gaze at him. Stop battling your eyelashes, Mei Han Shui said apathetically. I'm not interested, most especially with someone like you. Mei Han Shui has no sense of romance at all. He's not worth carrying his brother's shoes. Hua Rowei never wanted to deal with him anymore. She was so angry that her face looks like a slab of pig's liver. After saying her goodbyes in a rush, she wiped her tears and ran away, wailing. She had run off but Mei Han Shui was still upset with Shui Meng who was stunned and rooted on the spot. He pointed at the wooden box and gave Shui Meng a stern instruction, These are for you. Eat them up. Shui Meng was still in a daze as he secretly wondered in his heart how Zhang Yuchen, at his age, could still unceasingly attract these swarms of women. He glanced at the box of snow lotus absently and said, Thanks. No need for thanks. Mei Han Shui's jasper glazed eyes held a sense of irony. His pale lips opened to add, Eat them to repair your brain. Shui Meng. After a while, he finally processed what he had heard but Mei Han Shui had already left. He was left shouting at Mei Han Shui's back, Mei Han Shui. Are you looking for death? How dare you provoke me? In reality, Mei Han Shui was much more reliable than his brother. Ever since Shui Meng inherited his current role, he had always followed the proper etiquette and propriety with Shui Meng. But that day, Shui Meng didn't know what wrong medicine he took that made him taunt him like he did when they were much younger. Worse still, after taunting him, he had just turned his back and left. Thus, the two parted most unhappily. Shui Meng even secretly cursed Mei Han Shui's brazenness. He even wondered if in his past life, he had also been inflicted by some sort of poisonous flower that made his mother inseparable from these two exotic flowers of the Mei family. Could normal people stand to be with them for long? Nope, not even for a day. Afterwards, Mei Han Shui never returned to Shi Shangpik. Shui Meng thought that his intent was to never saw him again for the rest of their lives. Yet today, Mei Han Shui suddenly has something that he needed to discuss with him urgently. Shui Meng couldn't help but have some questions. Why is he here? Did he come to repair my brain again? Elder Suanji was stunned, 
What? Elder Suanji's blank look called back some of Shuemeng's rationality. Shuemeng coughed softly and told himself to just forget it. He's a sect leader and Mei Han Shui was just a dashik scion. He hadn't inherited the mantle of Minjiao Tower yet so his position is a level higher than his so he should be more magnanimous and not quarrel with him. Thus, he cleared his throat and said haughtily, well, what's his emergency? It seems like, a large upheaval was going on at Dobeo Manor, Elder Suanji said. At Shui Meng's eyes widened in astonishment and then he looked at Dobeo Manor's Lady Xiao Ho beside him, frowned and then he asked, did he clarify what the hell was happening? Elder Suanji shook his head and replied, Head Disciple Mei didn't talk about the particulars of the situation but according to him, his brother is the cause of the problem. Mei Hangxiu who was standing on the side, raised his brows in confusion. Elder Suanji didn't sense that she was reacting oddly and hesitantly said to Shui Meng, as well as yourself, sect leader. Shui Meng. The Mei brothers were not treated as outsiders at Qi Sheng Peak. Therefore, neither of them needed to wait in the outer hall of Loyalty Hall but was rather invited to rest in the garden veranda at the back of the hall. When Shui Meng arrived, Mei Han Shui was leaning against a pillar, looking up at a newly grown Haitang tree with flowers. He wore the snow-colored, flowing-sleeved silk robes especially made at Kunlun Taxiu Palace. Its pattern was simple, yet elegant. The edges of his sleeves and hemline were trimmed with pale blue. Perhaps because his crown of brilliant, gently waving golden hair was too dazzling that his clothes didn't make him seem dull or lifeless at all. Instead, he gave off an impression of a glacier top mountain in hibernation, cold and lofty but with heat buried just under the snow, filled with deadly lava silently roiling and waiting to explode. It's unknown when he would erupt, when would his heat boil over, when would he burn those who've gotten too close? Shui Meng coughed and Mei Han Shui turned his head. You. They hadn't seen each other in such a long time and thus things were awkward. Shui Meng didn't want to waste unnecessary words with him so instead he coughed to express his feelings. His first cough was to get Mei Han Shui to turn around. His second cough was to express his greetings. His third cough meant to express that bygones were bygones. His fourth cough. Mei Han Shui's jasper eyes looked at him skeptically and asked coldly, Are you learning to crow like a rooster? Shui Meng. The technique you are using is quite unusual. Shui Meng never thought that he would not be able to understand the deep meaning behind those coughs at all, that he would even ridicule him about it. He couldn't help but glare, Mei Han Shui. You. Let's not talk about us for now. Mei Han Shui stands with his hands at his back, the water drop jewel on his forehead was shining with a bright luster. Shui Ziming, did you know that you're in big trouble? Huh. As a good child who always aimed to please his mother and his Shi Zun from a very young age, Shui Meng was naturally wary of the words you're in big trouble. The master of causing trouble at Shi Sheng Peak was always Mo Ran, that Mo Weiyu. Thus, he immediately asked nervously, what did I do? Did you or did you not use the pseudonym, Dobeo Manor destroyed my youth to leave more than a hundred negative comments on the sorrow relieving scroll? So what? Shui Meng was so angry that he put his hands on his hips and asked. Are you going to tell me that Manor Master Ma got so mad that he couldn't bear to live anymore and drowned himself by jumping into West Lake? Mei Han Shui glared at him. Shui Meng who was the full recipient of this glare couldn't help but feel guilty. Feeling a bit of shock, he hesitantly said, no way. Did he actually jump in the lake? What jumping in the lake? Mei Hangxiu's eyes fell unabashedly onto Shui Meng's hip. With a gaze that could make one felt like they were sitting on pins and needles, he stared at Shui Meng's stance and said rudely, Also, you're the master of a cultivation sect. Be conscious of your bearing and appearance. Don't copy the manner of a shrewish woman. W, what the? Shui Meng's rage spot had been hit. Hold on Mei Han Shui. No matter what, I'm still a sect leader. How can you talk to me like that? Mei Han Shui's eyes swept over him, 
I'm only being straightforward with you since we are alone. If you don't want to take my advice, then it's fine. Please continue holding that pose. You can even keep it while you eat, just remember to find a disciple to hand feed you. 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 Shwemen was so furious that he almost fainted. He really didn't know who was more hateful, Mei Han Shui or Mei Hang Siu. Mei Hang Siu teased him incessantly and kept his flirty and carefree demeanor no matter who was around which sometimes make Shui Meng felt as if he was losing an exceptional amount of face. Mei Han Shui was different. In front of others, he would let him save face but once those people are gone or when he was in a bad mood, he would say things that were even more infuriating than his brother. And because Mei Han Shui normally put on airs and had very few interactions in the outside world, the cultivation world's impression of him was very superficial and thus, he maintained a good reputation. So, no matter how much Shui Meng raged and condemned Mei Hang Siu's poisonous tongue, everyone would just look at him with pity and advise him, A Ya sect leader, when you get the chance, please have some white fungus and lotus seed soup to decrease your heart fire. There's no need to fret so much. Just like that. No matter how much Mei Hang Siu bullied him in front of him, he would only say that the way he puffed his cheeks was quite unique and that no one can win against him when it comes to foolishness. Last time, he even told him that he needed to repair his brain, then now he was saying that he needed to be hand-fed by others. If Shui Meng tried to tell this to others, no one would believe him. Shui Meng felt like a mute man made to eat gold thread, forced to suffer in silence. He was so angry that he couldn't figure out what to do when he heard Mei Hang Siu said, let's get to the matter at hand. The problem was caused by the over 100 negative comments that you gave. After a pause, his golden brows scrunched as he continued, of course, there was my brother's contribution as well. What the hell was going on? The main cultivation tool controlling the sorrow relieving scroll has cultivated into a higher state. Shui Meng was flabbergasted, what? Mei Han Shui went it, it's thanks to what you and my brother has bestowed upon it. Shui Meng's mouth opened and closed repeatedly, finally, he managed to say in stunned disbelief, then, then what did it became? It became a human. It gained human form. Yes. Shui Meng smacked his lips nervously. His impatient nature wouldn't allow him to let Mei Han Shui to bear down on him bit by bit like this so he said anxiously, go on and explain, what's the situation? To state simply. Don't state it simply. Shui Meng felt he was being worn down to tears. He jumped up and anxiously said, you're complicated so explain its complications. Mei Han Shui, glanced at him indifferently and said lazily, fine, complicated it is. When Manor Master Ma was refining the sorrow relieving scroll, he put a rare wisdom spirit stone into its main scroll in order to give it a more human-like intelligence. That wisdom spirit stone can imitate the actions and manner of a living person. However, it's still a dumb stone after all, if you interact with it once or twice, it won't learn anything much. But one day, Hanks Yu also bought a sorrow relieving scroll. And then, he created a hundred identities on the sorrow relieving scroll and talked to five hundred girls at the same time. He did this over a hundred times which allowed the main sorrow relieving scroll to gain some extraordinary insights and knowledge through him. Alright, this sounds very much like Mei Hanks Yu. Mei Han Shui looked at Shui Meng with an unimpressive gaze, lifting his eyebrows the tiniest bit, don't you dare think this problem was caused by him alone. If it were just Hanks Yu, things would be fine. It's because right at that time, you happened to leave more than a hundred negative comments on the sorrow relieving scroll. With those harsh, cutting words, you gravely injured the spirit's newly developed sense of pride causing it to become angry and flee. Shui Meng was astonished anew, how is this possible? There's more, Mei Hanks Yu said with no sympathy, in its fury, the main scroll began to absorb all the spiritual energies of the sorrow relieving scrolls users and then it began to imitate you and Hanks Yu. Not long ago, it broke though Manor Master Ma seals and with the help of heavenly lighting, it cultivated into a human form, 
becoming a monster. This monster has high spiritual power and suffers from two incurable sickness. What sickness? First, extreme frivolousness. Sounds like he got that from Mei Hanks Yu, Shui Meng commented. And the other? Mei Han Shui paused, lowered his pale golden eyelashes and looked down on Shui Meng, his lips opened to state clearly, the second is abnormal narcissism. Shui Meng nodded, completely void of self-awareness, Mei Hanks Yu is indeed narcissistic. Mei Han Shui. The completely oblivious Shui Meng continued, it seemed that even though I gave more than a hundred bad reviews, it didn't get any of my traits. He breathed a sigh of relief and asked, Sam what's the situation now? Can Manor Master Ma not control this monster by himself? Mei Han Shui was left speechless for a moment and was about to say something when he heard the sound of rustling leaves behind a rock garden and immediately shouted, Who's there? The flowers trembled and after a bit, the clever and lovely Lady Xiao Ho came out from behind the rocks, a dead leaf stuck in her pale hair. She didn't dare to look at Mei Han Shui but smiled and waved at Shui Meng, sect leader, I was just passing by. I will just go on my way. Before she could even move two tiptoes away, Mei Han Shui called out to her darkly, stop right there. Shui Meng frowned and said, she is a guest at Qi Sheng Peak, a Dobeo Manor disciple from Xiao Ho Group. She's really nice. You don't need to be so rude to all ladies, you know. Mei Hanks Yu squinted, a lady. Yes. From Dobeo Manor. Yes. Xiao Ho. That's right. Mei Han Shui, with a face like the coldest of frost, walked down the steps until he reached Laja Xiao Ho's side and said, Mei Hanks Yu. Shui Men. Are you playing with him again? End chapter. Dumb Husky and his white cat she's on. Extra chapters. Shui Meng's blind date. Tea selling little sister, part 6. How miserable. That night, Mei Hanks Yu sat in front of the bronze mirror, sighing as he looked at the injury to his face. He, himself didn't know how he managed to escape Shui Meng's wrath with his life intact earlier that day. Looking at Shui Meng's posture, he knew that he couldn't wait to strip him bare of his clothes and beat him to a pulp. Fortunately, Veggie Bun was such a loyal friend. Seeing that the person who had fed it so much dried fish over the past few days was in peril, it bravely jumped out and meowed loudly as it tried to stop Shui Ziming from eating him alive. Truly too miserable. Did he have to use so much force? Mei Hanks Yu touched the bruise at the corner of his lips, then hissed and frowned. I just cross-dressed and teased him a bit, that's not enough reason to threaten my life. In the guest room, Mei Hanks Yu said coldly, you deserved it? That will teach you not to bully him so much. Mei Hanks Yu stared at his brother through the bronze mirror and said, you talk as if you don't bully him yourself. Who's the one who takes advantage of every opportunity to insult him to death? Besides, I don't just always tease him, I've helped him out, too. What help? Mei Han Shui asked coldly. In case you couldn't tell, he was clearly going mad with rage. I could tell. Mei Hanks Yu paused then suddenly smiled. But you know, he gets so interesting when he gets mad so even though I really did mean to make him happy, in the end I couldn't resist it with how much he was tempting me. As he spoke, he stood up unsteadily so he leaned up against a wooden table and bumped against Mei Han Shui. I was only playing around. It was just a bit of fun. I'll still do my best to look after him. Look, he'd been happy the entire time I was here at Qi Sheng Peak and he only got mad this one time today. If I may say so, I think I did a pretty darn good job of being Xiao Ho for the past three days straight. Mei Hanks Yu batted his cat-like jade eyes and pouted, so you shouldn't be so upset. Mei Han Shui has an odd expression on his face as he said, you're not allowed to trick him like this again. Ha, all right. Next time I'll come up with a different scheme. You. I'll let you join in, too. This is all your fault. Mei Han Shui said angrily. 
I suggest that you start thinking how you would explain yourself in front of Manor Master Ma tomorrow. I'm going to sleep. Weren't we going to go out and have another round of teasing Shui Meng? Does your face not have enough bruises for one day? Mei Hanks Yu opened and closed his mouth silently. Then he listlessly laid his head down on his brother's bed and sighed, Alas, what's the meaning in living if you can't mess with people's head? Mei Han Shui's face blackened, who said you could lay on my bed with your shoes on? Due to what Shui Meng and Mei Hanks Yu unleashed through their meddling, Dobeo Manor was already being beaten black and blue and was overwhelmed with complaints. As the original source of the problem, and it didn't matter whether they meant it or not, they were tasked with pacifying the mob on behalf of Manor Master Ma. So, on the morning of the following day, despite of how much Shui Meng was unhappy with everything, he had to go with the two Mei brothers. The three of them rode their swords and rushed over to West Lake. When their swords landed and they arrived by the giant knight cat totem at the entrance to Dobeo Manor, Shui Meng was stupefied. Outside the magnificent manor, he saw a crowd of common-dressed civilians, their hands holding red lacquered wooden cards, aggressively shouting something. Because there were so many difference roars, even though the shouting was quite loud, he couldn't make out exactly what they were complaining about. While Shui Meng was in a stupefied stupor, he saw a line of women coming from around a street corner donning red skirts and green robes and wearing thick facial makeup. These were all the madams of the pleasure houses in linen. These old brothel keepers who would normally tear each other to pieces upon catching sight of each other, were now suddenly working together for a common purpose. Together with one voice they shouted. Return my number one. Return my top flower. Return my daughters. Return my tea serving little sisters. Shui Meng has never seen such troops like this before. He was someone who was not scared of anything under the heavens or on earth, but today he discovered that he couldn't help feeling a sense of foreboding towards these women. Mei Hanks Yu noticed how flustered he was, smiled, and patted him on the shoulder then said, It's all right. Ladies are very soft creatures. They won't gobble you up. As soon as he finished speaking, a madam suddenly pounded on her huge bosom with the force one would use to break a boulder on their chest, striking with such magnificent ferocity that Shui Meng eyes almost bugged out of their sockets. The madam angrily shouted, Dobeo Manor must cease all these bewitchments. That's right, someone from the crowd bellowed out, return my daughter's self-esteem. Someone else shouted, he called my wife a cake. My wife is crying. What's all this mess? What's going on? Shui Meng muttered. Mei Han Shui tapped him on the shoulder with the Xiaofeng sword and said to him, follow me through the back door. Shui Meng was still mad and didn't really want to talk with the brothers but when he saw that the front gate was impenetrably being besieged and the disciples of Dobeo Manor were pitifully putting themselves on the open by the door, he had to turn his eyes and just follow the Mei brothers to the back door of the manor. Shi Shang Peak sect leader Shui Ziming and Kunlun Taxiu Palace disciples, the brothers Mei Hangsiu, here to see Manor Master Ma. Ah! The eyes of the disciples guarding the back of the manor brimmed with unshed tears of relief. Sect Leader Shui. Head Disciple Mei. You're all finally here. Shui Meng asked, Where's your Manor Master Ma? There's so much clamor outside. He should at least go outside to try and appease the crowd. How can he shut himself inside in this situation? The disciples had been all right up to now but once this matter was brought up, the guarding disciples immediately began to cry and started to snivel against Shui Meng, Ma Manor Master, he, he. Shui Meng always looked down on Manor Master's Ma mentality and believed that he's someone who turned to nature for tranquility so he once again asked nervously, he didn't jump into the West Lake, did he? The guarding disciple sobbed, no, no. Last night, Last night, Manor Master Ma became a flutterfly and flew away. Shui Meng jumped to alertness and said, Flutterfly, what's that exactly? A flutterfly. You know, the thing that flies and everyone likes. The guard disciple anxiously gestured with his hands and said, Fat flutterflies. 
Shui Meng still didn't understand. Mei Hangxiu suddenly asked, Are you a Fujianese? Yes. Yes, the gatekeeper nodded repeatedly. Asterisk apparently in the Fujianese dialect, H and F sounded the same. Mei Han Shui turned his head indifferently to explain to Shui Meng, he's talking about butterflies. Shui Meng. However, when they went to Dobeo Manor's reception pavilion and saw the pitiful and flying about manor master Ma, Shui Meng asked a question that came from deep within his soul, fuck. You call this a butterfly? A little bee was buzzing and flying right and left, up and down. It flew so fast that Shui Meng couldn't help but want to lift his hand and smash it flat. An elder of the Dobeo Manor sect immediately stopped him, you mustn't. If you hit him, our manor master will die. Manor master Ma who had been turned into a diligent little bee, flopped around once and then landed in the middle of a red sandalwood table. A pair of bee eyes stared at Shui Meng, they seemed to be crying to sect leader Shui about its plight. Shui Meng thought that this entire thing is just too ridiculous. He pointed to the bee and said, No, this thing can't be manor master Ma. Are you sure he didn't make up a story to fool you in order to avoid facing the people clamoring outside? It's absolutely true. We guaranteed a replacement if it's not authentic. The sect elder said miserably. Last night, I personally saw the manor master turned into a flutterfly with my own eyes. Shui Meng had to ask, are you a Fujian, too? I'm from Funan. Shui Meng could feel a headache developing, fine continue. After our manor master became a flutterfly, he flew around Dobeo Manor, pollinating flowers and doing what his strength allowed him to do. Shui Meng clenched his teeth, this is a bee. There's no need to be suspicious, sect led Shui. Have you ever seen such a careful, cheerful, exceedingly canny and clever flutterfly? Shui Meng choked, I'll say it one more time. This is a fucking bee. The manor master has turned into a flutterfly and has started his flutter dance so I'm afraid that today, he cannot personally receive our guests. Therefore, this duty would fall onto this insignificant one, Chen Suyuan, Elder Chen will serve as a temporary manor representative. Saying this, Elder Chen rose from his chair and gesture, please come this way. Shui Meng. From what he can see, this elder Chen might not be able to understand human speech. The disciples of Dobeo Manor brought them tea and cakes. The three of the and elder Chen ate as they talked while the little bee that was the transformed Manor Master Ma perched cutely on the teapot lid. It turned out the sorrow-relieving scroll had absorbed the emotions of the cultivation world's foolish men and desperate women and had begun to develop within itself a thirst, a desire to find the its dream partner. So. After it gained human form, it began to plot. Originally, this wouldn't have been a big deal. If there was some other small spirit that that also desired companionship, then the two of them could be matched up and the problem would have been solved. But problems emerged when it goes about finding a partner by assimilating the traits of Shui Meng and Mei Hangxiu. Because of this, the scroll's spirit became exceedingly picky. Whether it was a well-bred young lady from a well-known family or the jade of a minor family, either it was the top flower of the pleasure house or the tofu seller Chi Shi, none were worthy of itself. It called the most beautiful bride prospect of linen, too fat. It said that the most charming maiden was too body. It said that the top flowers of the pleasure houses have hairy legs. It said the tofu seller Chi Shi have big stinky feet. Normally, such poisonous mouth should have long ago make the ladies trample it to the ground and hammer it into a meat patty but unfortunately, it had refined Mei Hanksyu's charm into a spiritual power so no matter how cruelly it mocked a lady, she would still inevitably become lovesick for it. If it wanted to lure a woman who already had a lover, it would take on that lover's appearance and profit from the woman's pearly tears. Upon hearing this, Shui Meng was filled with righteous indignation and exclaimed, this is too outrageous. As he spoke, he turned towards Mei Hanksyu and said, Well, look at the disaster you have caused. Mei Hanksyu was speechless. Then, Shui Meng asked, But Elder Chen, why did Manor Master Ma turned into a bee? 
Chen Suyu inside, it's like this. The scroll spirit had rejected too many of the common people of Linen. From the streets, to the brothels and even to tea houses, it provoked them all. It seems to have a special impact on women. All the women who had been rejected by it developed a complete change of personality. For instance, the top flower of Chunchalu was originally a clever social maven who could coax happiness out of any a guest but ever since her encounter with the scroll spirit, it's like her character has a complete flip and she became an honest and blunt spoken elm would not. What do you mean? In the past, when she greeted guests, she would say something like, Dear customer, how lovely your complexion is, I see that the redness must be a sign of coming good fortune and wealth or dear customer, how hale and hearty you are at your age, I bet you could manage a household of 18, no 80 concubines. May hanks you, these kind of praises, isn't it overly excessive? Well, the guests like to hear this kind of thing, Chen Suyuan said. But now she had totally changed. For the same guest, she'll say things like, You dog, your face is so gloomy. You shouldn't come out too often. I'm afraid that I'll be contaminated with your bad luck. Or, old man, other people can do it seven times a night, you on the other hand can only come seven drops at a time. Look how your wrinkles flap around like a turtle. Aren't you ashamed to come to pleasure houses at your age? Upon hearing that, both Shui Meng and Mei Hangxiu was speechless. Mei Hangxiu however, laughed out loud. As he grinned his asked, how did that pleasure house fare afterwards? It was destroyed. Why do you think they've come to complain at Dobeo Manor? Chen Suyuan sighed and said, our manor master went to investigate and found that all the women have the same similar case, they all have major personality changes. Those who were too shy to even leave the house are now running out wildly on the streets. Those loved, pampered, and charming beauties are now taking writing brush to draw chest hair on themselves while looking at the mirror. Those who were saying rabbits are cute, why would we ever eat rabbits, are now eating five rabbit heads, five duck heads and five chicken heads in one bite. The more Chen Suyuan talked, the more he crumbled onto himself. We couldn't allow matters to go on like this so our manor master took charge and take on the matter himself. Did he go and take down the spirit? No, this scroll spirit can't be subdued with violence. First, it wasn't really a bad spirit, it's just wasn't right in the head. At the end of the day, it hasn't physically hurt anyone. Second, our manor master found out that should one subdue the scroll spirit through violence, it would explode and spread all the information it has gathered from everyone who had used the sorrow relieving scroll across the cultivation world. It would meant all those confidential information of our clients will be exposed. Our Dobeo Manor runs a serious and honest business. If something like that were to happen, the manor's glorious reputation would be destroyed. May Hanksyu shook his head, it's not only that. Could you imagine the havoc it would create amongst the populace? What if any married men or women had revealed shameful things to it behind their spouse's back? Shuemeng felt his headache got worse, so then, what did Manor Master Ma did? The Manor Master arranged to personally meet the spirit and then disguised himself as a woman. He said he would seduce it, make it feel an emotional connection to him and persuade it to return home willingly. Manor Master Ma used himself as a honey trap. The corner of Shui Meng's mouth twitched. Does Dobeo Manor lack mirror? Shi Sheng Peak can lend you one, free of charge. When the little bee heard this, he flew up in a fury and began to fly around Shui Meng's head, buzzing its condemnations. Chen Suyuan glanced at the bee and said awkwardly, This. Ahem. Even though our manor master Ma is a magnificent and heroic specimen, he knew that the scroll spirit had a very demanding and precise requirements. So obviously, he did more than just dressed up in a woman's clothes. He also bought some bewitching incense from Zhang Yuchen. This incense is very potent. As long as the other party stayed in the same room for the length of time it takes to drink a cup of tea, you can dazzle them and make them think a sow looks like a fairy. When he got to the last part, 
he quickly added, of course, I'm not saying that manner master ma looked like a sow. The little bee, bzzzzz. Shuemeng asked, then what happened? Did the bewitching incense fail? Did that bastard Zhang Shi sold fake goods again? No, Chen Suyuan became even more embarrassed, almost kowtowing he continued. It, when the scroll spirit caught sight of manner master ma dressed as a woman, it let out a gagging noise and then rushed to run away, so, so it didn't stay long enough to drink tea. What a miserable story. Shui Men wanted to laugh but exerted his utmost to hold himself back. Mei Hangxiu though did not have the same reservation as he let out a hearty chuckle. Shui Men turned to him and admonished, Don't laugh. This is serious. Women who have been rejected by the scroll spirit would have their temperaments completely changed but men who were rejected by the scroll spirit would directly turn into animals. Chen Suyuan gave a devastated look towards the bee that Manor Master Ma turned into. The elders of the sect spent the entire evening trying all sorts of techniques but they can't release the spell. We have no choice but to ask someone to send help. Ask help. Shui Men was stunned for a moment before he felt a bad sense of premonition, from who? As soon as he finished speaking, he heard a loud announcement from a disciple outside the reception hall, sect leader Zhang from Gaiyu Ye sect has arrived. End chapter.